Today, it isn't uncommon to see home theaters with seven, nine, or even 11 bed layer speakers, multiple subwoofers, and often four or even six overhead Atmos speakers. Now to achieve higher channel counts, it requires more speakers, more subwoofers, a higher end AVR or processor that can handle the additional channels, and of course the amplification needed for each speaker. Over the years, home theaters have continued to grow in channel count. What began as five speakers and a single subwoofer has evolved into much larger speaker layouts. Now, many of you have shared with me over the years that you don't have the space or maybe you don't have the budget for a high channel count home theater. You might be wondering, is it even worthwhile to invest in a home theater if you don't have the ability to add multiple speakers in a big configuration? Can you still get an incredible home theater experience from a simple 5.2 speaker layout? Now today I'll be answering those very questions as I share my review of the Arendal Sound 1723 THX speakers. Arndall Sounds sent me an entire system from their flagship 1723 THX series. Now this 5.2 system consists of five bed layer speakers and two subwoofers. The 1723 Tower THX for left and right, the 1723 Center THX, and a pair of massive 1723 Monitor THX speakers for the surrounds. For sub duty, we have their 1723 Subwoofer 2S. Each subwoofer has dual 13 8 inch woofers in a sealed cabinet powered by a 1200 watt continuous amplifier. Now at the time of this video, the total cost for this entire system is about $12,800. For complete specs on each of the speakers, you can check out the previous unboxing video that are linked down in the description below. Now for this review, I'm using my Marantz AV7706 processor monolith 11x amplifier providing 200 watts continuous to the front three speakers and 100 watts to the surrounds. The Arndall 1723 THX series offers first class build quality. Each speaker uses HDF, which is high density fiberboard. Now this is much more dense and heavier than the standard MDF that most speaker manufacturers use. Now I am extremely impressed with the level of detail that Arndall has put into each one of their speakers and subwoofers. Looking at the rear of the center channel, you can see this beautiful recessed brushed aluminum back plate and dual rhodium plated copper dual binding post. Each tower includes a high quality spike kit, which is great for leveling your speakers on carpet. Now, if you got wooden floors, the rubber feet work great for protecting those delicate surfaces. Now, I prefer to leave my speaker grills off but for those of you that need to protect your drivers from children or maybe pets, or maybe you just like the aesthetics of not being able to see your speakers, Arndall provides each speaker with steel grills that are magnetic. Now when placing the grills on each speaker, I did notice that they do not snap into place, so you'll have to adjust them slightly to get them perfectly centered. Now I absolutely love the style of the beveled corners and the attention to detail in this 1723 THX series. The only complaint that I have with the satin black finish is that if you touch them, they're definitely going to leave some fingerprints as you can see here. And at times I found it difficult to remove the fingerprints from the speakers. So this is just something that you want to keep in mind. After calibrating the system with Odyssey XT32, I verified the levels using a SPL meter that was sent to me by TopTees. Now this device allows me to measure the volume or the SPL of each speaker from my listening position. Now, as usual, Odyssey didn't get it right, so I manually adjust the trim levels of each speaker so that they're all level matched on the SPL meter. Now, having all of your speakers level matched allows you to get a much more immersive experience. Now, I'll have a link to the Top T's SPL meter down in the description below if you need one for your system. In my time with the 1723 THX speakers, I found that they make excellent speakers for both music 
and home theater. Watching Ready Player One, dialogue is super crystal clear and really easy to understand. Now when the cars crash and the coins are scattered throughout the scene, the sound is crisp and very immersive. Now, I love demoing the scene when the dinosaur stomps, the wrecking balls hit the wall, and when Kong lands onto the freeway. Now there are some ultra low frequencies here, so I was really curious to see how the Arundel 2S subwoofers would perform. Now the bass during this scene was super clean. Didn't have any hint of distortion or bloat, but I could tell that they did not extend down maybe much lower than 20 hertz, which I'll confirm later on this video when I share the compression test for the subs. Now this isn't uncommon, as most subs are not capable of reproducing single digit frequencies with solid output. But the bass that the 2S did produce in this room was really tactile, and I certainly was shocked at these sealed subwoofers. Now most of the time, if you're looking for big thunderous bass, you really need to get a box or a cabinet that has a lot of volume in it. One thing I love about the 2S is they really have a relatively small footprint. So this will make it much easier to fit in a wide variety of spaces without having to sacrifice that output and that slam. Now, most of the time I'm typically not impressed with say a 15 inch or smaller sealed subwoofers, but frankly, this pair surprised me. While watching Into the Spider-Verse, I remember my daughter came into the theater room with her boyfriend and they just wanted to see if I wanted to sample some chocolate souffle that they'd been baking up in the kitchen. Now, as they were leaving, her boyfriend said that while they were cooking, he thought a storm was rolling in because of the thunderous bass the 2S were producing. Now, during the battle between Spider-Man and Kingpin, the Arundel subwoofer 2S provided substantial tactile bass, enough to where my entire theater seats were vibrating. And speaking of vibrating seats, the intro to Oppenheimer will give your subs a tremendous workout. These subwoofers handled it without signs of strain and had really significant output. In Gran Turismo, during the GT Academy race, just after the lights turn green, the screen goes black and there's silence. But man, when he punches it, there is a phenomenal deep tactile note from the engine that just permeated through my seats as well as through my body. Needless to say, I definitely need to make some time to watch the rest of this movie. And based on what little bit I've seen and heard, it's definitely demo worthy. During Spider-Man No Way Home, the 1723 THX speakers were able to reveal subtle nuances in the crackling of the lightning during the scene with Electro. I typically listen around negative 10 dB when watching movies as I find reference volume a bit too loud for sustained listening. But I wanted to see what the Arundel 1723 system had to offer at reference volume. So I adjusted the volume on my rants to zero dB and fired up the town scene in the Book of Eli. Now guys, if you don't have this movie, it is a must have. Not only is it a fantastic story, but the sound is phenomenal. I'll leave some of my favorite reference movies linked down in the description below. During the Book of Eli, the opening scene has a continuous underscore of low frequencies. Now, once again, the Arundel subs provided sufficient tactile response throughout my seats. It wasn't overwhelming, but it was certainly present. And when he releases the arrow, it is quite loud and I didn't notice any breakup of the upper frequencies. I then jumped to the gunfight scene in the town. Now I love this scene, and I'm happy to say that the Arundel 1723s did not disappoint. With each gunfire, you can hear the clicks of the guns reloading. You can hear shells dropping. The reverb of the gunshots ricocheted off the town buildings. It was absolutely incredible and enveloping. Now this scene is super intense, but it had me smiling and my adrenaline pumping. Now, before wrapping up and giving my final thoughts, I wanna jump over to the computer and share with you some actual measurements from the Arundel 1723 2S subwoofers. So after locating the best location in my room for both subwoofers and running Odyssey, here is the frequency response we ended up with in my room. Now, keep in mind, this is the response in my room 
your room is going to be completely different because you're going to have room modes and nulls in your room that are different than mine. Here I had the volume at negative 25 dB on my AVR. And what we're gonna do is increase that volume 5 dB until we reach compression. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. So increasing the volume to negative 20, you can see we have equal distance during all parts of this frequency response, all the low frequencies, all the way up to 120 Hertz. As we continue to increase the volume by five dB, here we have negative 15, everything looks good. Negative 10 dB, everything looks good. But it isn't until we hit zero, which is reference on my AVR, that we reach compression. What I mean by compression is we have equal distance along this entire frequency response until we get about right here. You can see this distance from here to here is not the same as the distance from here to here. Same thing happens all the way down through this frequency response. And so this subwoofer is compressing at this volume in my room. Now, ideally you would like to be able to reach reference volume with your subwoofers. And so that is 115 dB, which you can see right here. So ideally we want to be able to have peaks of up to 115 dB during a movie. But as you can see, this subwoofer is capable of hitting in my room about 112, and that is at its highest peak. At some of the lower frequencies, you can see this is 20 Hertz right here. We are only hitting about 100 dB. So we're 15 dB under reference. Now my room is 13 foot by 19 foot with 10 foot ceilings. So it's not a massive room and I do have two subwoofers in the room. So if you have a room about this size or even larger, you're either going to need more subwoofers to hit reference or you might want to consider looking at the 2V, which is the ported version, and that would give you even more output. Now in my room, I typically watch movies at negative 10 dB on my AVR. So that would mean that I would be hitting about right here. And again, for most of the frequencies, say from 26 Hertz on up, I am able to reach that. But anything below 26 Hertz, I'm down probably about, about four decibels. So even in my room, I'm still struggling to get to negative 10 dB and hit that with lots of output. Now I'm typically watching movies around negative 10 dB. So that's gonna help me out in this situation because I'm not pushing these as hard as somebody that wants to reach reference volume when they're watching a movie. So overall, I have absolutely no reservations recommending the 1723 THX towers or the 2S subwoofers. Now, even with a 5.2 system, this system would make an incredible home theater setup. Now I'll have links to the speakers and subwoofers used in this review, the Top Tees SPL meter, and the movies that I used during this review down in the description below. So be sure to check those out. And as always, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next video.